Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today for episode 5 of 5 on engines. We've made it all the way to the end. Final lap. Car puns. The best. So we've talked about how engines work, who invented them, alternative types of engines, electric cars, hybrids, all sorts of stuff, hydrogen cars. Today, we're gonna talk about the future of car engines and where people see them going now. All of this is speculative, but it's pretty interesting. And the funny thing is about where cars are going, I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's not a huge change from where they've been. It's incremental changes, it's, it's gonna be cool. Let's just get right to it. Cars run on more than just gas and electricity. I think you've probably already figured that out. We've already touched on hybrids, biodiesel, hydrogen. There are similar things like ethanol, compressed natural gas, but there are cars out there that are just thinking really differently about how they're gonna drive around outside. Solar cars, for example. Alternative energy has been progressing pretty rapidly. We've got wind power, we've got hydroelectric power, we've got nuclear power, but solar power is one that we haven't quite figured out for like powering whole cities, but we can potentially run cars on solar energy. And there are some people actually trying to do this. There have been commercial cars that have implemented solar power already, but usually on the small scale, things that run headlights or just the radio. There's yet to be a car in the stock market, not the stock market, but out in a stock car situation that has solar power in a massive scale. There are people working on it. There are numerous solar car competitors where teams would build and race cars that rely only on solar energy, but they're usually hyper light vehicles. They're not exactly useful for hauling groceries back and forth. And there are companies making those technologies into practical prototypes. But right now they're mostly just shown at consumer electronic shows and auto shows. If it works for electric vehicles, it should work for solar vehicles. But instead of plugging in, it uses energy from sunlight. The sunlight would then charge the battery, the battery would then run the motor, and you could drive around. The problem isn't so much the solar car, it's that solar panels are not particularly efficient. Even though you cover the car with solar panels, there's not enough electricity generated to power a normal sized car. A lot of these prototypes have to go into this more one person vehicle thing, because remember what we were talking about earlier, the lighter the thing, the more efficient it can be, because it requires less to get it going. Currently, they do that and then they race them and they don't actually go that fast. <laughs> the world speed records are measured by average speed over a 500 kilometer course. And the new record was set at 107 kilometers per hour, which sounds like a lot in kilometers because I don't know, metric sounds funny like that. 66 miles an hour, not exactly super fast. But remember though, this car is a car built for the fastest it can go with solar energy. It looks like a race car, doesn't really go that fast, and yes, it only uses solar power, but obviously this is not quite ready yet for market. So solar power, not the best. What about wind power? Seems kind of counterintuitive. You have a car that's powered by the wind that's driving, so it's getting wind blown through it. I don't know. I'm not talking about like hooking up a sail to a car and like sailing it down the street, although there are people who have done that. I'm talking about taking a wind turbine to power a battery. The problem is, doesn't really work that well either. If you Google wind-powered car, you're more likely to see a story about a Chinese farmer who made his own wind-powered car. It charges with solar panels and the fan acts as a wind turbine, which doesn't kick in until the car reaches 60 miles an hour. Wind is definitely not the answer because you'd need to still power the car with something else like batteries that were charged solar or plugged into the wall. But people are still working on the idea of using roof-mounted wind turbines to power an electric car. In fact, there's a patent of one of these from the 1970s. Still though, that seems like not the right answer either. Some people have tried running cars on compressed air. You take the compressed air and you put that in to move the pistons. Instead of using exploding fuel, you're using compressed air to move things around. But of course, once you start looking into that, they haven't made a lot of developments and some of the stuff that they have created only showed up at auto shows. They didn't ever think that they could release it into a market system. One car named the AirPod says on its website that sales will be ready by 2016 or 2017, but they don't have any updates, really. <laughs> the reason we're entertaining all of these different ideas is because we all know that crude oil is limited. Oil in fossil fuels is a limited resource. Solar and wind 
and air. Those things are renewable. They're everywhere. We can continually use them again and again and again. However, renewable resources don't seem to pack the punch that we need to make cars do what we already get them to do. Some argue the next thing we should do is go with ammonia. Ammonia can be burned in an internal combustion engine with only minor adjustments to that engine. The emissions would be cleaner, they wouldn't contain carbon dioxide, a greenhouse causing gas, and some claim that making ammonia is actually easier and cleaner than refining gasoline. Another plan would kind of combine the two. You'd mix a little gasoline, a little ammonia. One plan out of the Ammonia Research Group at the Korean Institute of Energy Research made a prototype that used 70% ammonia and 30% gasoline, and that reduced carbon dioxide emissions by 70%. Another study out of England found that using ammonia to create hydrogen for hydrogen cell vehicles could be another green alternative. So the future might have more stinky ammonia in it. Water has also been touted as the future of car fuel, but it was mostly a hoax. One guy was sentenced to five years in prison for fraud. He falsely claimed technology could convert water into hydrogen fuel. Others have also been arrested for calling these out as hoaxes. People are trying things, though. That's the important thing. Even if there are hoaxes, and maybe water isn't the key. Heavy water, perhaps, if we can figure out cold fusion, but regular water, probably not. The future of cars and engines likely comes back to an internal combustion engine of some kind. There'll be new rules, new regulations, new technologies, which will make it run cleaner and maybe on something other than gasoline, but it could also be the alternative to electric vehicles. Because though electric vehicles are very efficient while driving, making batteries is not entirely green as technology goes. It might mean that we need a combination of alternative energies, a little solar, a little electricity, a little ammonia, a little gasoline, just to try and figure out a middle ground. Imagine a car that runs on part gasoline and part ammonia, with solar panels to run the radio, an electric motor to make it more efficient, so it's like a hybrid engine as well, and it can recharge using wind at a powered station somewhere, and, and it's not like a real car but it's using all of these different technologies and combining them all together to make a car that's hyper-efficient, doesn't require and only utilize fossil fuels, and doesn't pollute nearly as much. Just like how one person did not invent the internal combustion engine, it's gonna take a lot of people doing a lot of things over a lot of years to shape and change how we drive on this planet. I mean, what about flying cars? Where are they at, huh? Where are they at, though? We'd like to stop and take a second and thank our sponsor for this series, Toyota. The Toyota RAV4 Hybrid lets your sense of wonder lead the way and drives your passions further, which is something that we live every day here on Test Tube Plus. We try and get way deep into these topics, so thanks to them. Thank you so much for tuning in today and for all the other days this week. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe here on our channel on YouTube. You can also find us over on iTunes. Check us out there. We have an audio podcast version of this show. Instead of five episodes, it's just one big squished together audio track. So make sure you look that up if that's more your style. If you have any other future ideas for Test Tube Plus, things that we didn't get into in engines, because there's so much here. I mean, when I first started looking into engines, I thought, wow, we're gonna get so much out of these five episodes. We might even run out of stuff to talk about. It turns out we barely scratched the surface. There's so much more we could talk about. So if you have ideas, let us know in the comments. Thanks for listening to Test Tube Plus. Thanks for watching. I'm Trace. You can come find me on Twitter, at Trace Dominguez. You can find the show at Test Tube, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>